All right. Okay, so um, this uh, this weekend we have the uh, Indy 500 coming up, delayed because of COVID-19 uh, to August, as opposed to Memorial Day. Uh, last weekend, uh, there was the qualifications and Marco Andretti uh, won the pole. So he's starting first uh, in the race because he had the best qualifying time. And it's announced and it's posted, um, his average speed is, uh, he qualified at 231 miles per hour, but I'm gonna say that his average velocity during his four qualifying laps was zero. Why? Okay, so um, let's start by defining some physics terms. Displacement, All right? So displacement is how far is an object from the origin? Now the origin is just where you call the position equal to zero. That is um, a choice that you can make, or sometimes it'll be given in the problem, or sometimes it'll be a very natural point to call the origin. So uh, for instance, when you're driving uh, a race car, the origin makes sense to call uh, the starting line, right? And position and displacement, I, I use them kind of uh, interchangeable, right? So interchangeably, displacement or position means where are you right now, okay? And that's, uh, it's measured in meters in this class. I mean, any, any sort of length, but you know, we use uh, SI metric units. So we use meters um, and direction matters. It's a vector, right? So a, a vector is, is something that has both a number and a direction to it, right? So it matters if you are, say, uh, if, you're, if you're moving side to side, it matters if you're to the left or if you're to the right, if you're moving up and down, it matters if you're above the point that's equal to zero or if you're below it, right? Uh, and the symbol that we use for, for displacement uh, generally is X, especially when we're working with one dimension. <clears throat> when we start having motion in two dimensions, right? So like side to side and up and down, then we can use the familiar X and Y for those. Now, uh, displacement, uh, excuse me. Uh, displacement is different from distance. Right, so, so uh, displacement is where are you right now compared to some reference point, uh, and, and that's gonna be diff, uh, distance. So uh, here's, uh, we're gonna look at two different uh, individuals here. So there's me and there's my dog, Luna. Um, and uh, we'll pretend that I'm not actually at my house now. We'll pretend that this, you know, this was made for uh, when I commute to uh, teach classes in person. I'll be doing that for my other class later today. Um, <clears throat> so at, at 6 a.m. waking up, um, Luna and I are in the same uh, position, right? Our, our house, uh, or my house, uh, she's not on the mortgage. Uh, my house on the near east side of Indianapolis. Um, so I'll call that my origin. Right, um, I'll call that zero. And then I'll call the positive direction, the, you know, basically uh, eastward or east southeast direction toward Terre Haute, right? So, and that's about 80 miles away uh, as the crow flies. Sorry, I'm seeing a chat. Am I near Irvington? I, I'm closer to, I'm between Irvington and downtown. So uh, near Tech High School. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm gonna get a second screen going later on because uh, using the chat at the same time. Okay, so then uh, when I'm teaching the class, uh, I'll be at a, uh, a position of plus 80 miles, right? So, okay, so let's start our uh, first poll. Right, so uh, you can uh, bring bring up your uh, poll everywhere. So at the moment that I'm on campus and uh, drop Luna off near downtown Indianapolis at uh, at her doggy daycare, it's about two miles away. So who has the greater displacement at that point? Okay, so we got to 40 results, uh, which is the max. So. Let's see what our results are here. Okay, so uh, yeah, so our starting point uh, was zero, but 
Okay, so maybe some people, yeah, again, I am still at home, but uh, in this picture, when I'm in Terre Haute, uh, I have a greater displacement, right? And then uh, when I'm done teaching for the day, I, uh, so yeah, there's the, the correct result, Dr. Barks, greater displacement. Okay, so then when I'm done teaching for the day, I head back home, pick up Luna, um, and uh, we go back home. So by 6 p.m., uh, we're both back home. So the question is, uh, at 6 p.m. tonight, who will have the greater displacement? Me, Luna, or is it both the same? All right, polls full. So, correct. So uh, most people said both the same, which is the correct answer, uh, because displacement is where are you at that moment, right? And then just to, to drive the point home, who travels a greater distance, right? So uh, me from Indianapolis to Terre Haute and back, Luna from uh, near east side to near downtown and back. Okay, good. So um, now in real life, that makes a big difference in some ways, right? Uh, the, the fact that I travel, you know, 160 miles round trip um, has, has an effect, right? Like, I, uh, you know, I have to spend that time in the car, um, you know, whatever. I, I see all of the cornfields and the uh, creek valleys and the um, truck stops, right? So the so in everyday life, distance sometimes is a useful thing to talk about. In physics, what we really want to focus on is displacement, right? Because all of our equations that we're gonna gonna work with, uh, these are these are called kinematic variables, right? So distance is our or displacement is our first one of those, uh, along with time. Um, they all tell us about what's happening right now compared to where you were at some starting point or what you were doing at some starting point. Okay, so um, the next definition that we can base off of displacement is velocity, right? So velocity is, is similar to speed, right? How fast is an object moving, but velocity also has a direction to it. And when you're in uh, one, and that's because it's based on your displacement. Right. So um, in one dimension, we can say left or right, we can say up or down, but those uh, mathematically are written just as, is your velocity positive or negative? Okay, so, and uh, velocity, you know, in, uh, in our everyday experience in the US, uh, we use miles per hour most often, right? That's what your speedometer in your car uh, tells you. Uh, if you're anywhere else in the world, it's mostly kilometers per hour, uh, but using uh, SI units, we use meters per second, right? Um, and a good rule of thumb, because it's always, you know, when you calculate something and you get, you know, something's going like 30 meters per second is, you know, how fast is that? If you double that number, that's approximately miles per hour. It's it's very it's approximate, but it's a good rule of thumb. So if you calculate that a car is going 30 meters per second on the highway, that makes sense. If you calculate that a snail's moving 30 meters per second, you know that's wrong. Right. Um, so it's just a good uh, sort of way to way to check uh, whether something's reasonable. So what velocity is is how is your displacement changing over a certain amount of time? Right. So we can uh, define it that uh, that way. Uh, velocity v. Okay, so that makes makes sense with the um, the word is equal to the change in displacement divided by the change in time, right? So change in meters over change in seconds gives us meters per second, and that that delta symbol um, prob probably mostly familiar with that, but that's uh, change. That's what that means. So you take your current minus your starting point, uh, and that'll give you your change in velocity. Right, so um, because it's displacement, it depends on where you define your starting point. So uh, somebody shared this meme with me, which I uh, posted on uh, Sycamore underscore physics. So that's the, uh, uh, I guess it's official, uh, 
uh, Instagram account for the Department of Physics, which um, I don't know, you could probably guess who runs it based on how much I uh, always tell people to follow it. Um, <laughs> and maybe based on ages of people in the department, but I digress. Um, so um, you can follow that. Uh, the, later in the semester, there'll be uh, an opportunity to, to earn some, you know, uh, sort of late uh, passes or things. Uh, if you check the syllabus wildcards uh, uh, based on uh, making a project that I, of something that I can post here. But anyway, uh, if, you, if you die in the same location that you were born, your average velocity is zero. Right, so um, you know, I calculate. You know, my average velocity. I was born in Indianapolis, um, in a hospital on the north side. So my average velocity is just whatever five miles divided by thirty-five years. Um, so that's you know whatever one seventh of a mile per year is my current average velocity. But later this afternoon, when I'm in Terre Haute, my average velocity will be a bit higher because I'll be about eighty miles from where I was born. So, you know, that's maybe not the most useful uh, uh, point of comparison there. Um, but, you know, so let's say you have a, uh, uh, somebody running a race, right? Um, let's do, you know, just a, um, <clears throat> well, so, so we have this runner that starts at a position that I'm calling plus five meters, right? And then they run past the zero point, the origin, and then uh, four seconds later, the runner is at uh, negative 15 meters, right? So uh, the question is, what's that person's velocity over that time? So how we calculate it is we take x, which is their position at the end of the motion, or currently, and subtract x naught, right? So that x sub zero, we call x naught. That's the starting point. And we divide it by the time. And we always assume time starts at zero unless there's some real reason to, to call it something else, right? Why would you, you know, if you were timing somebody in a race, you're gonna clear your stopwatch, set it back to all zeros before you start it, right? So you're not going to like start it at 67.5 seconds and then start timing from there. It just makes your life harder, right? So change in displacement is, well, we uh, take our ending position, which is negative 15, and we subtract uh, five, right? Because that's the starting point. That's our x naught. And we divide by the change in time, which is four seconds. So we get negative 15 minus five is negative 20. And that gives us an average velocity of negative five meters per second. I'm gonna check what's going on in the chat real quick. Okay, yeah, so, uh, right, uh, can we be in the same location if the planet is changing position too? Definitely not, right? We're going around the sun, the sun's rotating around uh, the center of the galaxy. Um, so, yeah, our average velocity in a cosmic sense is actually much higher than that, uh, than anything will ever go because uh, the galaxy rotates pretty fast. But uh, in this class, we're mostly gonna take the Earth as our reference point because that's what we do in our normal life most of the time too. All right, so um, now if you use the definition of velocity, we automatically get a negative number here. So we wanna check, the, uh, a simple check is does that make sense? Well, first of all, we can take that five meters per second uh, and say, is that a reasonable running speed? That's about 10 miles per hour. So that's a sprint, uh, but it's not gonna get you in the Olympics. Um, so. Well, maybe not even a sprint. Depends on how fast you are, I guess. Um, so, but yeah, it's definitely a running speed. Now, what does the negative mean? Well, all the negative means is that she's running toward the negative direction, which in this picture, um, I won't point because I, I don't know. I don't know how the video reverses my image, but she's moving toward the left side of the screen, which we've called the negative direction, right? So. If you get a negative number at the end, you should check, okay, with my picture, does it make sense that the, that the number is negative? And, and the answer is yes. All right, uh, any questions at, at this point about the, the definitions of either displacement or velocity? All right. 
So um, at this point, we can answer my, uh, oh, see something in the chat there. Uh, what would the magnitude be? Okay, so, um, right, so the, uh, the question here, of uh, what's the magnitude versus what's the actual velocity? So magnitude, uh, you can think of as absolute value. Um, so the magnitude of this velocity is just five meters per second. Right, you always have to have the units in there, but magnitude is basically you drop the minus sign if there is one. Uh, the question, is the left always going to be negative? That's kind of the standard choice but the, uh, the left is uh, where you decide it is, right? So, so that's uh, either up to, if the problem gives you a definition, take the left to be negative, take down to be negative if we're moving vertically, um, then, um, then you use that. And yeah, that's kind of standard, but it's not, uh, it's not set in stone. Um, and yes, the slides I will post in Blackboard. Um, yeah, I don't think they're already up. Okay. Um, yes, the Zoom is, uh, Zoom is recorded. Th this Zoom is recorded. When, when, when you're having your, uh, group discussions, I won't be recording that. Um, so, um, yeah. Breakout rooms are never recorded. I will actually, I guess if you record the session and, and then if I go into your breakout room to check in with things, then those would be recorded. But um, yes, this is. Okay, so it, uh, now we can answer um, the question from the uh, beginning, which is why did I say that uh, Marco Andretti's average velocity during his laps was actually zero? Well, uh, you qualify for the Indy 500 by doing four laps uh, around the track. The track's two and a half miles long, so that's a distance of 10 miles, but you start, you end up at the finish line, which is the same as the starting line. So your change in displacement is zero because you start at the starting line and you end at the starting line. Uh, so displacement is zero, right? So there are definitely contexts where using you know, in that case, it wouldn't make any sense to insist on using velocity because then everybody's velocity would be uh, zero, average velocity. Um, but um, yeah, uh, usually uh, when you're doing a physics problem, you do want to use displacement. All right, so um, we started with our displacement and we said, how does that change over time? That gives you a velocity, right? now. If you go for a long period of time, um, like for instance, a, uh, a qualifying lap at the Indy 500, right? Uh, takes a few minutes. Um, what you're really uh, calculating is an average velocity because of course you're gonna speed up and slow down. You're going to turn um, to get back to where you started. But the average velocity there is what you're calculating. Um, so, if that velocity is changing, we can describe that too. And that's what's called acceleration, right? So is the, the object's velocity changing? Um, and direction again matters, it's a vector, right? So um, if, you, if you're giving the, uh, the acceleration, you need to have a defined plus or minus direction and then give a plus or minus sign. If you just asked for the magnitude, it's just the number without you know, it's just a positive number. So if we have, uh, if you look at the definition of acceleration, change in velocity divided by change in time, well, that's meters per second on top divided by seconds on the bottom, right? So that's meters per second per second, and that's just a mouthful. So we usually say meters per second squared, right? So very important that you always uh, keep track of your units a position is, is meters, velocity is meters per second, and acceleration is meters per second squared. All right, so how is the velocity changing over time? Now in this class, we will um, generally be using constant accelerations, right? So the velocity might be changing, but the acceleration, at least for a given segment of time, is gonna be a constant acceleration. Okay, so 
now acceleration, um, you know, th there's this, uh, you know, in physics, we use words that have definitions in everyday life, but we have to give them more precise meaning, right? So just like in everyday life, you would say velocity and speed basically mean the same thing. In physics, velocity is specifically has a direction involved. Uh, in everyday life, we use acceleration only to mean, or generally to mean speeding up. And we use this term deceleration to mean slowing down. I will never use the term deceleration in this class. I know that the homework um, problem, uh, problems use the word deceleration. But the reason why I don't do that is because whether the acceleration are positive is positive or negative depends more on your definition of, um, or it depends on your definition of which direction is positive or negative and doesn't always correspond to whether something is speeding up or slowing down, right? So um, here is a um, question, which I have partially covered, so I can't see it. There, let me close the chat. Okay. So the question is, which of these cars has a positive acceleration? And so go ahead and get your um, poll responses in. Room for a couple more. All right, now it's full. So let's see the results, okay. Yeah, so A, most people said A, so uh, that's correct. We have a, uh, so uh, that car, well, all the cars start at 10 meters per second moving to the right. So, if, uh, and we're given uh, values here um, for which way is positive or negative. So to the right is positive. So if you take uh, 20 meters per second and subtract 10 meters per second, that's a positive 10 meters per second. And then we don't know how much time it took for it to make that acceleration, but whatever time, it's still gonna be a positive, right? Okay, so we calculate the acceleration uh, here. You know, So we, first we find the change in velocity. The final is 20, the beginning is 10. So we do 20 minus 10, um, and then we would uh, divide by the given time. All right, so now let's look at the acceleration of this car. So it starts at negative 10 meters per second, and then later is going at negative 20 meters per second. Is that a positive acceleration, a negative acceleration, or a zero acceleration? All right, let's check these results. All right, so we have uh, a bit of a split, although I think maybe some people uh, after seeing the uh, the results might be changing their, their answers. So, okay, so the, these polls um, are not entirely just about getting the answer right, right? Because I just introduced this to you, right? So if you got it wrong, that's good too, because now you're gonna say, ooh, you know, that, that, that makes you feel a little bit of emotion, right? Oh, I got it wrong. I thought I, I, thought I knew what I was doing. Uh, and it should help that uh, that stick a little bit. So why is the correct answer negative? The car is speeding up, but it's moving to the left, right? So if we take a, uh, oops, I thought I had that spelled out. If we take a negative 20 and minus uh, negative 10, that's gonna give me a negative number. It's still negative 10, right? So the change in velocity is negative, uh, even though it's speeding up. Right, so this is why you have to be careful. The distinction between a negative acceleration doesn't always mean uh, slowing down. And right, I'm gonna check the, the chat here. Do we assume time is, uh, so uh, the time can't be zero, but whatever it is, if it's two seconds, if it's four seconds, right, whatever, because uh, if you, you can't divide by zero, um, it uh, hurts your brain and your calculator makes things explode. 
Um, so whatever it would be, say, say it took two seconds to make that change or four seconds to make that change. Um, the velocity, I just, uh, didn't, yeah, didn't have a time. The, the, the example we just did didn't have a time given, but we know it's going to be a positive amount of time, right? You're going negative uh, 10 meters per second at a certain uh, time, and then later, right, whether that's two seconds later or two minutes later, that's a positive number, right? So if we take negative 10 divided by a positive number, you're going to get a negative acceleration no matter what that time is. Okay, so let's, uh, let's try another uh, example here. Or actually, it's the same example, uh, but instead of saying, um, or this, the same picture, uh, but the question is, ra rather than saying, is the acceleration positive or negative, is the car speeding up, slowing down, or going at a constant velocity? Right, and so um, I kind of uh, kind of said this, but uh, the car is speeding up, right? So um, this is again the, the difference between real life and physics, right? So let's say that I, when I, uh, if I take take the example of me driving to Terre Haute, I told, I said that my positive direction was towards Terre Haute, right? So if I, uh, on my way home, I'm driving in a negative direction. If I drive 90 miles an hour and get pulled over and I tell the police officer, oh no, don't worry, I was going negative 90 miles per hour, which is less than the speed limit because I'm calling this direction negative, that's not gonna fly, right? So um, same thing or a similar sort of thing here, right? Just because we called this the negative direction, what are you gonna do to get your car from going negative 10 meters per second to negative 20 meters per second in this picture? Are you going to step on the gas or are you going to hit the brakes? You're going to step on the gas, right? So even though you're going to the left, uh, it's still a speeding up, right? So even though you, you go to a more negative uh, number and your acceleration is negative, you're speeding up. So, <clears throat> well, it's, it might seem like, you know, the, kind of complicated to keep, uh, keep track of, but really there's only four situations. Or you could really say there's only two situations. Are your velocity, think of directions, right? If your velocity and your acceleration point the same way, right? So if I say they're both positive, then I'm speeding up. If they're both negative, then I'm speeding up just going in the opposite direction, right? So negative velocity with a negative acceleration means speeding up, right? Slowing down would happen if they point opposite to each other, right? So if I have a positive velocity but a negative acceleration, that means I'm hitting the brakes and I'm slowing down. If I have a negative velocity and a positive acceleration, that means I'm uh, slowing down also, right? So if they point in opposite directions or in one dimension, that would be um, they have opposites, sorry, what, what example, in one dimension, same direction means same sign, pos both positive or po both negative. Um, opposite direction means opposite sign, so one positive, one negative, and that would be slowing down. Okay, so um, I want I want you to take a take a second uh, for for on your own, and then um, I'm going to uh, briefly uh, break you up into into groups. See if you can come up with a with a real life example for for each of these categories. Um, so speeding, so basically all those categories, right? Same direct two with the same direction and then two with opposite direction of uh, velocity and acceleration. So where would you be speeding up with a positive acceleration, speeding up with a negative acceleration, 
slowing down with a positive acceleration and then slowing down with a negative acceleration. And for me, I, I like to think of vertical movement here because it, that makes a lot, uh, you know, in that case, you know, up, taking up to always be positive um, kind of makes uh, intuitive sense. Whereas just calling left positive or right positive is just arbitrary. All right, so see if you can come up, uh, come up with some examples. Uh, just sort of uh, getting into um, what the next uh, learning module is going to be about, which is uh, which is graphing, right? So here is a is an example of. Um, sorry, I didn't want to do that. I want to do this one. Here's an example of a velocity versus time graph. Right, so in this velocity versus time graph, uh, you start out with a negative velocity, uh, it becomes zero, and then you get a positive velocity. Right, so let's say um, that up, let's, let's consider this to be vertical motion. So, uh, and I'll call up to be positive. I, I generally pick that. Uh, so if up is positive, uh, that means that you start out with a negative velocity, so you'd be moving down. Uh, but you slow down. You eventually get to a zero velocity, and you turn around and have a positive velocity. So that would be, uh, if we think of what that motion looks like, it looks like something going down, slowing down, turning around, and going back up. Right. So maybe like uh, instead of a person jumping out of a plane with a parachute, it's a person jumping off of a bridge with a, a bungee. Um, attached, right? So they're falling down at a high speed. They slow down because of the bungee cord, and that pulls them uh, back up, and they start to speed up again. Um, and in that case, the acceleration is always positive, right? The acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. It's the slope of this graph. The acceleration is always positive, but you start out slowing down and then you end up speeding up, right? Um, so if I show the graphs of all three of those quantities, right, position versus time, you move down, turn around and come back up, you turn around at the three second mark, which is the same point where that velocity goes to zero, but the acceleration is always positive throughout that motion. Right, so um, that's just kind of leading into the next thing. You know, I, I wanted to to kind of say, well, this is not just an arbitrary thing of why you would ever have a uh, a positive accelerate. In this case, positive acceleration slows you down part of the time. 